If cameras were Pokemon, I think this is the one I would use my Master Ball for. I kept a secret from you. Because I got a new camera in the very beginning of November 2020, but I am only telling you now because there is nothing I dislike more, well, other than racism, sexism, homophobia and Nickelback maybe, than people who talk about a camera without properly knowing the camera. And I promised to myself that I would never like to be that kind of person, but if I decide to talk about a camera, on camera, I would make sure to spend a good amount of time with it beforehand. Therefore, new camera, but half a year later, so that I could explore it in my own pace and without any form of social media interfering with my first experience. I got the Hasselblad X-Pan. But let's try to not get crazy here, but instead let's try to find out why in fact so many people go crazy for this camera system. To do so, I will give you some background and some basic information about this camera. I will walk you through all of the functions and I will tell you what I like, but also what I dislike about this camera. And in the end, try to make a verdict if I'm happy with it or if after half a year of usage, I maybe even regret buying this camera. So let's start with some background information. The Hasselblad X-Pen is a 35mm rangefinder camera that was the result of a cooperation between the Japanese company Fujifilm and the Swedish company Hasselblad. They kind of fusioned in together to create a very unique camera system that is capable of shooting panoramic images on film without any cropping, without any stitching, but in fact a camera system that would be capable of shooting in panoramic mode natively with a truly wider negative. The first model of this camera was produced between 1998 and 2002. And apart from the one that is branded by Hasselblad called the X-Pan, which is also the one that I have, Fujifilm brought out pretty much the exact same camera with their own branding called the Fujifilm TX1. And Baxter, sorry, I mean Jason from Granny Days has picked up the TX1 quite recently. So if you haven't seen his video, what are you waiting for? A bit later, between 2003 and 2006, a second model of the X-Pan called the X-Pan 2, as well as the Fuji counterpart called the TX2 were released with some, I would say, minor improvements. And what's interesting to know is that the Hasselblad versions were actually made to tackle the European and the American markets and the Fujifilm versions were made to tackle the Asian markets and apart from the branding there's also one difference between these two and that is the color coating. While the X-Pan comes in a grey, not as resilient color coating, the TX models come in a champagne colorway with a much more robust coating. As I said before, the unique feature of this camera system is the possibility to shoot panoramic images. And the size of a negative is 24 to 65 millimeters, which is almost double the size of a regular 24 to 36 millimeter image, which I think is pretty insane. But because of the bigger negative size, you will only be able to fit 20 to 21 exposures on a regular 36 exposures film roll. However, the camera is also capable of shooting regular 35mm images, but I have to admit that I haven't even used this function one single time. For the system, there are only three lenses available. There is the 45mm lens that I have on my camera right now, there's a 90mm lens and also a 30mm lens, but you don't have to worry because you won't be able to afford all of the three lenses anyway. Let's take a closer look at the camera and let me walk you through all of the functions. This is the switch to turn the camera on, either in single or continuous shooting mode or with a self-timer. And on top here you can find the exposure compensation dial. Here we have the shutter speed dial to select your shutter speed, which will also be shown in the little LCD screen. And you also have the possibility to choose aperture priority mode and if you do so, the camera will also show you which speed it has selected for you. In this window you can see how many frames you have left, counting down actually when shooting, which is an interesting concept because the camera is automatically unwinding the whole roll and rewinding it back into its canister as you shoot. Which is pretty useful if you accidentally open up the bag because this way your shot frames will be saved. 
we have this switch to change between panoramic and regular 35 mm mode and P indicating that we are in panoramic mode where the frame lines within the viewfinder will also change accordingly. It is possible to change that mid shooting since the camera will automatically adjust spacing in between the shots. Under the LCD screen there is this button to rewind the film mid roll, this button to illuminate the LCD screen and the AEB button for exposure bracketing. And top tip from a nerd like me whose favorite type of literature are actually camera instruction manuals. When holding the AEB button while turning the camera on you will see a number in the screen and if you multiply this number by 10 this is the number of times the shutter has been fired in total. The socket for a cable release is on this side here and at the front we have the PC flash terminal as well as the ISO selector that you can either change yourself or let the camera read the DX coding on the canister. I have been using this camera for six months now and I feel like I got to know a lot of the ins and outs of this camera. So let's start with the things that I actually like. One of the biggest pros about this camera I think is that it enables you to see the world in panoramic, which is simply such a unique and such a different experience because it kind of forces you to utilize your vision in a different way. Not every composition that would work on a more traditional form factor as 2 to 3 or 3 to 4 would work on panoramic. But also the other way around, something that you would simply pass on could work wonders on panoramic. So for me this camera does not only kind of train my eye in terms of composition and in terms of using a more unusual aspect ratio, but also trains me to think more clearly how the aspect ratio and composition can work together. Further, the X-Pen has a viewfinder with panoramic frame lines in it, which enables you to see and compose in the same form factor you will later shoot in. A lot of other solutions as for example using a 35mm film roll in a medium format camera might result in the same image but you won't be able to see the kind of panoramic aspect ratio beforehand but there's a lot of guessing and a lot of estimation involved. Composing in the same manner as I am shooting in is for me personally something very crucial that I definitely don't want to miss out and that this camera is one of the very few that is offering that. So in sum, I feel like I'm in a different photographic mode when using the X-Pen because I am kind of forced to see differently, to think differently, to compose differently and that alone is just so much fun. And talking about fun, I can also say that technically this camera is also just a lot of fun to shoot and to operate. The viewfinder is super bright, it's super big, the viewfinder patch is very well visible and it's definitely up there in the league with Leica and Contax and other rangefinder manufacturers. When I have this in my hand, it just feels super sturdy. The build quality is insanely, insanely well made. I just feel like I have a very intelligent and very beautifully designed piece of craftsmanship in my hands. And I can only say that I am just a sucker for intelligent design and kind of engineering, which yeah, makes it simply a lot of fun to shoot. And further, when you think about how big the negative is and that the lens actually has to cover almost the size of a medium format film negative, the form factor of this camera is pretty pretty small. Don't get me wrong, it's still a hefty and very very heavy camera and honestly I'm a small person, I have small hands and it might just look huge and ridiculous in my small hands. For what it is, it is still a small camera. And another bonus point that I did not account for beforehand is the aperture priority mode. Usually I shoot almost all of my cameras in manual mode, but I have tried the aperture priority mode in here and actually really really enjoyed it because it's super precise, the metering is spot on and it sometimes makes things just a bit less complicated, which is why I found myself using the aperture priority mode quite a lot. Of course no camera is perfect and also the hyped up Hasselblad X-Pen isn't. So let's take a look at the things that I really dislike about this camera. As I said before, aperture priority mode is something I really enjoy on this camera, but it has one major downside. And that is that the shutter speed that the aperture priority mode will select for you is not visible in the viewfinder, but only on the LCD screen. 
And what I regularly do is that I check if the aperture priority mode is choosing a shutter speed that I would agree on and if it's a shutter speed that I can still handheld for example. So if I want to check that, I'll put the camera to my eye and then I will have to take it down from my eye again to check the LCD screen and then bring it back to my eye to shoot, which kind of results in this really weird chimping move if I want to use the aperture priority mode, which is really annoying and inefficient, but luckily was changed in the later models. And another downside I would mention are the lenses. The lens quality is top notch, one of the best and sharpest lenses I have ever used and that is coming from me. I am not a pixel peeper and usually sharpness is something I don't really pay attention to, but seeing the sharpness from the lens truly blew me away. So it's not the quality itself. The limiting factor about the lenses is not only that there are only three available, but also that all of the lenses are really, really slow. The 45mm and the 90mm come with the fastest aperture of f4 and the 30 is even slower with a fastest aperture of f5.6. That itself is not really really fast and additionally the lenses come with some pretty heavy vignetting. The vignetting is not as severe on the 45 but I heard that it's very very dominant on the two other lenses and especially for that a Hasselblad and Fujifilm created central ND filters for the lenses to compensate for the vignetting. As I said on the 45 it's not such a big issue and it basically disappears if you stop down the lens and for me personally I don't mind a slight vignette and I think it can add up to the composition every now and then but if you are very very careful about that and you don't want to have any vignette and you would like to use a kind of central ND filter this will cost you some additional stops of light, which will make the lenses even slower. So great lenses, great quality, but definitely nothing for every day or for every situation. And the thing that kind of bugs me the most that should be number one on the list is the paint job of this camera, which only applies to the first model of the X-Pen, not the second one and not the Fuji versions. But I have the first model of the X-Pen, which is very, very sensitive when it comes to its painting. It's known to be not very resilient towards scratches and that a lot of users experience chipped off paint. For example, um, before using the Peak Design system that I'm using on here now, I had um, a camera strap with some metal o-rings attached here and I didn't think about it much and after some time I realized that it was actually scraping off the paint from my X-Pan <laughs> and it was almost mint when I got it. <sighs> so it hurts. I, I try to see cameras as tools and try to not care as much because it's there to, to be used and it's meant to, to be a tool, but I still have to admit that I cried for two hours. And last but not least, a downside that I have mentioned on other cameras before, but I seem to make the same mistake, if you want to call it that, over and over again, because the Hasselblad x band is not a mechanical but an electronic camera. And that means that the electronic circuits in this camera will be fried at some point and the camera will die. And it's not a question if the camera will die, but it's more of a question when the camera will die. Luckily, I have not heard about so many cases where the x band spontaneously died on somebody um, compared to other cameras like the Contax T2 or T3, which seem to die pretty regularly. But I think it is important to mention because you, you can basically be very unlucky and buy a camera for a lot of money that will end up as a very expensive paperweight. To sum that up, especially the last negative points I have mentioned, might probably prove to you that for me getting the Hasselblad x band was not a totally rational decision, but in fact a very, very emotional driven decision because I made the decision to get the Hasselblad x band with all of my heart and with my guts and maybe not so much with my brain. Because there are some very, very heavy downsides that might backlash sooner or later and make this investment maybe not worthwhile. But with something like photography that at least for me is something that is very emotional and not always as rational, it is okay to make emotional decisions if you are aware of that. The Hasselblad x band slowly gained some sort of cult status around it with gaining popularity, gaining prices and gaining interest, even though this camera was never meant to be a camera for the mass market. In fact, it is 
a very, very niche camera. The Hasselblad X-Pen 1 was made with a total amount of 16,800 copies and the X-Pen 2 with only 5,500 copies, which makes it a very, very kind of narrow target group because it was intended for some very specific documentary and some very specific landscape photographers, but never to kind of the mass market as an everyday or all around camera. And I know that it can get very easy to get caught up in a hype and kind of fall head over heels emotionally for a camera like that. So with a camera like that, I think it's very important to think about your motives, like photography wise, of course, but also your inner motives, what you would like to use it for. And if it's kind of necessary to invest in a more expensive system like the X-Pen, Sif, <laughs> word joke here. But for the people who might still be kind of unsure if the camera system is really something for them, I would advise you to try out some more affordable systems, like for example, the Horizon cameras, which I know is a different kind of system because of the rotating lens, but I think it's one of the kind of closest and more most affordable um, arrangements that comes to the X-Pen or something like the Lomography Sprocket Rocket just to find out if the X-Pen is really the love of your life or maybe just a quick crush or affair. And I feel like I sound pretty negative <laughs> when talking about the Hasselblad X-Pen, which is okay because, I mean, we talk about negatives and big negatives. But um, yeah, I think naturally the question arises, do I regret buying this camera. And I can say still with all my heart after half a year of using it, absolutely not. I do not regret this camera a single second. In fact, I would do the same decision over and over again. And if I wouldn't have it now, I think I would certainly buy this camera sooner or later because it is very hard to describe what this camera gives me. It gives me just a totally different kind of photographic mode even though I have only used it for half a year, I feel like I learned so much about my own vision, about my composition, about my photographic approach. And it really, it, it's tackling me every day to think outside of the box and um, approach photography in this panoramic format differently, which for me was totally, totally worth it. And I'm very, very happy that I made this very emotional decision. But I mean, who knows, maybe if another shiny Pokemon, I mean shiny camera comes my way, then maybe I would regret having used my master ball on this. But for now, I'm very happy and I'm very, very glad that I get to have this as a companion for a lot of photography trips. And I can't wait when we have different times where I can also use this on the street, do some street photography with it, because for now we have seen the shots. Well, it's a bit of an urban landscape, kind of boring uh, suburban German nature thing here going on. But I think that this will be like a very good companion for the future. I would be interested to hear about your opinions, your experiences about panoramic photography. If you had the chance to shoot a camera like the X-Pen or if you maybe came up with very different other creative ideas to shoot panoramic format. So please let me know. And that said, I would say don't be square, think a bit wider and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.